Hey, this is Roaming Millennial. Welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about getting married and having kids. Now, when I was growing up, there were about a million different things that I wanted to be. I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be a scientist. If you asked me what kind of career I wanted as a kid, the answer would probably change about every week or so. In terms of work, there's never really been this one thing that has always stood out to me as something that I knew I wanted to pursue. And I actually think that kind of uncertainty is pretty common among people and not just people who are young or my age. And up until a few years ago, before I started doing some serious self-reflection and before I matured a little bit more, I used to think that all of this indecisiveness and all of this searching meant that I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Then that, of course, led me to worrying that maybe I didn't have any real direction in my life. Maybe I would never really be fulfilled because I didn't have any goals that I wanted to meet. And in case you haven't already gotten it by now, yes, I am an anxious person and worrying about these kind of deep philosophical questions is just kind of my thing. But eventually I took a step back and I realized, wait a second, I may not have known and I may still not know what kind of career path I want, but that doesn't mean that I don't know what I want to be in my life. I mean, sure, when I was a little girl, I used to go back and forth between wanting to be a princess and wanting to be a space commander, which by the way, I've looked into both and neither are really feasible. But something that I've always known I wanted to be when I grew up, something that has never changed, was wanting to be a wife and wanting to be a mother. It sounds dorky, but I will fully admit that I was one of those little girls who used to have fake weddings with her stuffed animals as guests, that I've had my list of potential baby names ready to go since I was 10. And it's not that having a family is all I've ever wanted for myself. It's just that that's always been the most important thing, the thing around which everything else revolves. And what's interesting about this is that 50 years ago, hearing a girl my age say these kinds of things about wanting to be a mother and wanting children, that would have been completely par for the course, right? I mean, I'm of prime marrying and breeding age. Of course, my thoughts should be on marriage and my potential family. But now in our current year 2017, our cultural attitudes are such that I can almost hear the disgust radiating from some of you that are watching this now. I know at least some of you are probably thinking that I'm just some bimbo who lacks any ambition for herself. Someone who wants to attach herself to some poor unsuspecting guy and just start pumping out babies. Maybe you even think internalized misogyny is the reason why I feel the need to seek out some patriarchal oppression contract, otherwise known as marriage. Anti-marriage and yes, sometimes even anti-family mentalities like this are on the rise in the West. And if you ask me, this is the result of third wave feminism and this narcissistic self-indulgent mentality that our society seems to prop up. Allow me to elaborate. Now, it cannot be denied that marriage as an institution has many benefits, both to society as a whole and to individuals. Marriage is good for our health and it's also good for our happiness. Marriage also provides economic stability and a built-in safety net of support for those involved in the relationship. And of course, most importantly, the benefits of raising children within a marriage cannot be overstressed. On average, children from two-parent homes are less likely to have emotional or behavioral problems, less likely to be abused, and more likely to do better in school. Not only that, but since marriage ties individuals together, it's also responsible for establishing families as the basic building blocks of our societies and communities. And the role of the family is especially important from a civic standpoint if you're someone who believes in small, limited government like I do. Government may have no right to tell us what to do and to impose their morality on us, but families should be there to help us grow, help guide us in the right direction, help teach us right from wrong. Long story short, there are more benefits to marriage than I could possibly count, and yet we still have headlines like this and this by feminist sources trying to discourage people, and particularly women, from getting married. And not only are some feminist advocates outright trying to discourage marriage, but others are also trying to instill behaviors into women that make them so hostile and so selfish that no man would want to marry them anyway. In fact, there's now even an entire movement of men who want nothing to do with women. And in my opinion, it's at least in part due to how insufferable many women have become as a result of this third wave feminist attitude. Marriage rates have steadily been decreasing since about the past 40 years. And yes, we should be worried about this. Many people like to bring up the increased rates of cohabitation as a reason why the declining marriage rates might not be such a bad thing. Since, hey, maybe people are still forming the same bonds, they're just not bothering to get them legally recognized from the government. But in response to this, I've got to say that even though in many cases cohabitation does lead to marriage, especially if you're educated and if you're white, cohabitation is by no means a replacement for marriage. It has been found consistently in studies that, quote, cohabiting relationships which precede marriage are characteristically unstable, while cohabiting relationships which do not move into marriage are characterized not only by high levels of instability, but also especially low levels of relationship interaction and happiness. Specifically, cohabiting couples have a separation rate five times that of married couples. Cohabiting couples are also more likely to experience infidelity, and they tend to have more fighting and violence than their married counterparts. 
Sadly, much of third wave feminism has become about entitlement and asking what the world can do for you. How you can benefit from different policies and how you can get an artificial leg up over men or straight people or white people or whatever. It seems that all many feminists try to do these days is figure out how to do the minimum amount of work for the maximum amount of return. Obviously, all of those things go directly against what marriage is supposed to be about, so unfortunately it kind of makes sense that feminists would try to fight against it. While feminism teaches selfishness, marriage teaches selflessness. Feminism is always telling women how we shouldn't be ashamed of putting ourselves first, but in a marriage you become part of a team. And while feminism might try to tell us that hard work is no excuse for some good old imaginary gender oppression, marriage tells us that anything worth doing requires effort and commitment. And I'm not saying we should be forcibly pairing off high school students as soon as they graduate, forcing people to get married when they don't want to, but as a collective we all need to readily acknowledge that yes, marriage does have its benefits, it is what's good for society. With this video I'm not trying to comment or pass judgment on how individuals choose to to live their lives. I'm trying to point out how our overall societal attitudes toward marriage are changing for the worse and are changing due to selfish motivations. And really quick, I would also like to mention how kids fit into all of this. People are having fewer and fewer children in the West, especially white Americans. Women are actively being discouraged from becoming mothers and the benefits of fathers are being downplayed or dismissed entirely. Children require a lot of work and they are a huge responsibility. So of course, if someone isn't willing to make that kind of commitment to one other person, why would they be willing to do so for two other people, or three or four? And what's so frustrating about this is that the West's low birth rate is perhaps the most obvious sign of our cultural decline. We're no longer willing to perform one of our most basic biological functions, reproduction, because we're selfish and because children cost a lot of money, because we don't care about passing our legacy, our culture, down throughout the generations. Forming families is something that humans have done throughout our entire existence, throughout all of our evolutionary journey. But we're at a point now where these most primal and beneficial practices are being criticized and are being sidelined. If I could borrow some buzzwords from the SJW community, we need to normalize and legitimize families again. We need to bring the conversation about the merits of family values back into our public discourse. And we also need to tell young people, especially young college-aged people or people who are just entering the work market, that no, your career isn't everything. Of course, we should all strive to be successful in everything we do, but a bountiful work life is no replacement for family. And we should also make a point to mention that Prince principles like hard work and commitment that benefit you in the work life also benefit you in your personal lives, like consistently. And finally, the number one thing we should do, the most important takeaway from this video, is that we should stop writing headlines like this. Seriously.